Y'all, Father's Day is coming up soon. And if you use code DADSEASON at orcacoolers.com, you'll save 20% off your order. That's it. You can get the chaser, the traveler, the camper, the barrel chaser. You can get roto-molded coolers. You can get all the stuff at Orca Coolers for 20% off. If you use code DADSEASON, get something awesome for the dad in your life or yourself. Because sometimes you got to treat yourself. Use code DADSEASON at orcacoolers.com. Today's show is also sponsored by our friends at distilleryproducts.com. If you are a store, a podcast, maybe you have a blog, whatever it is, maybe you're a distillery and you need laser etched glassware at wholesale pricing, you got to go to distilleryproducts.com. They also have awesome swag there too, like flask, bar tools, all sorts of stuff. Check them out. I'd love to get you in touch with the family behind distilleryproducts.com. They're great people. We use them. You should too. Reach out to me. I'd be happy to get you in touch with them. Last but not least, today's show is sponsored by our friends at Spartan Race. Someone was out throwing a spear last weekend. What did you do? They were at a Spartan Obstacle Race. There's 5K, 10K, half marathon, even longer races, but with obstacles along the way. Lots of cool things like wall climbs, monkey bars, barbed wires, and spear throws. Go ahead, race with friends, coworkers, even by yourself. You'll make new friends when you're out on the course. Try it out. The feeling you get is unlike anything else, and we want to help you get that feeling. We have 50 codes to give away for the Nashville Spartan Race. Reach out to me. I'll tell you how to get one, and we'd love to see you out there at a Spartan Race. Well, I would. Zeke probably will be sitting there drinking, watching us, and laughing. What do you have for me, Zeke Baker? Let's see. I had a few uh, notes over here on the old phone scribble pad thingy. Here's an easy one. We're getting into summer. We're probably there now. What song makes you think of summer? Or like embodies or just kind of like put you in that mind space. Like, oh, yeah, good times, summertime, out, water, whatever. I mean, it's not Will Smith anymore. <laughs> I mean, if that was still your go-to, you're uh how old are you when that even came out? I didn't think you could have like listened to that song probably. I'm like a year younger than you. What are you talking about? Oh, you're more than that. No, I'm not. <laughs> No, I'm like a year younger than you. You're 39, right? No, bitch, I'm 40. When did you turn 40? We had a show around it. Did we? <laughs> well, I think we actually recorded on my birthday, maybe. All right, so I am a year and a half younger than you? I mean, it ain't that far. Anyway, what you going with? I don't know, man. I feel like you have something in your head that, like, just get us to the destination. Well, I mean, I, I do, but I just threw it out for food for thought to see what you'd come up with off the fly. It's just... I don't know. That's what popped in my head. I mean, just don't say like Madonna, like a virgin or something. I mean, that is a banger. <laughs> well, since you have completely botched this up, I'm just going to end it now. The the chorus or, you know, the, the music, like the intro, Jay-Z, Big Pimpin'. Like when that goes on, that's summer in my mind. Every single damn time. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is John Edwards. With me, as always, is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad's Drink of Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us part of your day. I don't know. I mean, there's so many good ones. Pick something. I mean, it, 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 there's no right or wrong. You're not going to lose $10 million by getting the wrong answer. Just say something. I'm really bad at this because I love music so much that, like, this is not something I could just flip out and go like that but it would probably be hip-hop something like smooth mellow maybe some west coast jams you know it's got that funky beat it's got synth in there it's probably death row clearly your wife never asked you this question any of your initial dates or you'd not be where you are today no she did not ask this (laughs) this is sinking like the hindenburg jesus but i will tell you that i was very very particular of what the string quartet i mean you were at my wedding the string quartet the music they played there were a couple songs that she said like these need to get played for family reference but like i was very particular about the music that was like the one thing i really wanted to do the thing that i was the most disappointed about is i really wanted to have the song be you know when you walk into the reception i really wanted it to be starships nothing's gonna stop us now made famous from the movie mannequin 2 but it ended up being uptown funk i got vetoed they made a mannequin 2 they did wow 
I was a fan of Mannequin One, but and, oh man, this is weirdly coincidental. Did you know they made a Romance in the Stone Two? Really? It's called Jewel of the Nile. Apparently, <laughs> seriously. I found this out yesterday, literally. But the reason I bring this up about Mannequin Two on the move, and nothing's going to stop us now. I find it interesting that it was the music from the second soundtrack. Same thing with Beverly Hills Cop, right? And Bob Seger that went to number one. I think nothing's going to stop us now. Went to number one. What was the band? Starship. So it was yeah, Jefferson Starship, Jefferson Airplane, then Jefferson Starship, then Starship. So like Jefferson's Airplane was like super trippy. Yeah. When you said nothing can stop us, all I could think of was like the Nine Inch Nails or Trent Reznor song. But that's a completely different uh, motif, I think. And Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now did go to number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. I'm sure people are really interested in this right now. So let's move on. You really derailed us here. I'm sorry. Next time I will like give me a day to prepare music stuff. Just be like, hey, I want to ask you what your favorite summer song is. Do you ever have political aspirations or, or any kind of like running for anything? I don't know or care what it is. No. Just just give a damn answer. That's that's the best advice I can give you. I am not going to run for Paul. There, there are too much skeletons in either one of our closets. We ain't doing that. I mean, we know you have an adamant policy. You're not running, period. Like nothing has to be said. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I will elliptical the f- out of an election, but I ain't running. That would have been a better cold open. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Ooh, some days you get it. Some days we don't. Some Sorry, days it but- takes us. You know, five minutes to get there. Some days we get there right away. Anyways, today we are drinking Larceny Barrel Proof Batch B522. It is from Heaven Hill. It is 123.8 proof. It's aged six to eight years. It's 68% corn, 20% wheat, 12% malted barley. Big news on this one, Zeke. It is no longer $49.99. It is now $59.99 for the MSRP. They went up 10 bucks. I mean, barrel-proof products, hard to find, and, you know, is what it is. So funny thing about this one is I told you I couldn't find it at first. If anybody wants to know how this show is going, this is how this show is going. I found the media sample for A122. I found C921, and then it was B522 was face down on my floor next to the recording setup. And I didn't know where it was, didn't know where it was. I was literally just trying to figure out and just tell you that I was going to say I couldn't find it. And then right before we started recording, I picked it up and I go, oh, there it is. There we go. We're good. So I found it. It's poured. We're going to talk about this. Zeke, what did you think about this whiskey? You know, I nipped this a few times and I almost kind of wondered if I'd eaten something or something was thrown off, you know, at that particular day or moment. You know, we've been fortunate enough to taste most of these releases for the past two or three years now. At least as best as I can remember, there's been a pretty good progression each time. Like gains are being made, nuances are getting kind of, uh, you know, weeded out, so to speak. And I really felt like they made some strides, especially with the barrel proof uh, larceny. This one, I think somebody might have stubbed their toe a little bit on. For whatever reason, it just seemed really hot to me. Kind of aggressive on the tongue. I mean, the proof's not that high. So I, I don't have any other reason to know what's going on there other than it just honestly seemed really aggressive on the tongue to me. I've had that sometimes with wheaters. Folks have thrown out there, maybe kind of like with, uh, you know, folks in the IPA space. If you don't have certain genes or whatever in your palate, you don't pick up certain flavors. Maybe there's something to do with that wheat and me. I do not know. But that being said, I did think it was pretty hot. Up under that on the front end, I did pick up some sweetness, but it was honestly tough for me to get to. What I did pick up reminded me of like the front two thirds of uh, you know candy corns, like you just bite off the the yellow and the orange and leave the, the the chocolate component by itself. And that was really about all I could pick up. Like I say, it just didn't hit me too well. It's funny. I really agree with you on this, but it's not even that I get a lot on the palate. It's like the nose is super inviting. And then the second I take that sip, I get cinnamon on the nose. I get some baking spices, maybe a little bit of fruit on there. And I know I'm not being specific on the fruit, but I'm just saying like there's a lot, right? It's a bouquet of different stuff. And then the second I take a sip on this, it's like burnt pizza, like not 
actually like pizza tasting, but you know, like when it burns the roof of your mouth and it singes. And it's not that it's overly hot. When I say like, I'm not getting a burn in my chest or I'm getting anything like that. It's just like, it singed my mouth and then I didn't get anything else. I didn't think about this until now, but I would almost equate it to, um, you know, like if you're, uh, you know, you're a kid and you love sour stuff like sweet tarts, salt and vinegar chips, any of the above, like warheads or whatever. You know, you the war, I was going to say the warheads. And like, you know, you keep eating them and you always let it sit in your tongue because you just want to like get all the flavor out of it. <laughs> and then you get to that point where you're like, oh shit, my tongue is completely like raw and you know almost parched or something. Like it was that kind of sensation. Because I mean, the proof's not that high and it, it, it doesn't feel to me like, you know, a 130 or hazmat type poor heat but I, I guess it just seems more like chemical maybe i don't know that's not the best word i don't like that but and our palates it, are different that's the crazy thing and you know you take it that seems first... reactive i guess you know like it, it it's like reactive in a, a, a non-friendly fire way i guess <laughs> well then if you keep going at it for me it, it just kind of gets to a point where it's like burnt oak where i'm getting oak like I can get a tasting note on it, but it's just not enough of other stuff. You know, I'm just getting a lot of oak. And for a six to eight year pour, this really shouldn't have a heck of a lot of oak in it like it does. But it's not like oak, like an aged oak. It's just like it seared the wood and that's what's left. Like this stuff was so hot, it literally charred the cask even more i'm not saying it actually could do that y'all i'm not that stupid but i'm saying it's like it, it almost like burnt you know the barrel even more and then that's what you get you're you're tasting burnt barrel well i mean it's a weeder and you know that's a very you know, catalytic type grain that just allows other flavors to be more noticeable so maybe that's what's going on and you know we've said countless times that weeders take longer than most any other mash bill of, of whiskey so depending on where these set maybe something to do with the barrels who knows it's not unfathomable but i, I mean i definitely would think at this point you know that's the the trickiest mash bill to try and nail down and also find consistency with funny thing about this one for me i mean 60 dollars even going up 10 bucks you'd think this would be a no-brainer i'd tell anybody to go find this and pick it up this is the first larceny barrel proof that i think i'm barring yeah, I mean, like, like I said, that's why I wanted to throw it out there in the beginning, because at least the past two, three years now, I mean, I feel like each time we've had it, I've been like, ooh, it got a little bit better. Oh, you know, it, it just kept, you know, progressing. But that's why I said this time I felt like maybe somebody stubbed their toe a little bit. Who knows? I totally agree with you, though, that, you know, the progression has been happening. It's been getting better and better. It's just up there with elijah craig barrel proof is something that i'm just like yeah come on dummy just go get it like why are you even debating it if you find it retail go ahead and pick it up this is the first one that i'm like i don't know inversely if by chance you find you know the a release from this year or the c from last from, year anything from further back that's got the old msrp just go ahead and clear off the damn shelves <laughs> But I mean, I think the crazy thing for me, too, is that Heaven Hill has been killing it in my eyes this year with the Heaven Hill 17, with the Old Fit 17, with the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, the A release of Larceny. Like, I feel like they've just been throwing out all bangers all year. And it's OK. Like, if you think about this release compared to everything else, their batting average is still like 900 right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're still killing it. And let's be honest, most likely always will be. But I feel like that Heaven Hill 17 is still up there with my favorite thing I've had so far this year. You know, kind of an interesting way to start the year, really. You know, uh, again, we, you know, we talked about on that show. So if anyone hasn't heard it, certainly reference it. But, you know, perspective wise, it's, it, it's kind of neat too. the fact that I think we're all geared up and, and built for Q3, a little Q4, a lot having all the, you know, quote unquote, big releases, and then to have one in Q1, just like showstopper. Oh, <laughs> well, isn't this a change of perspective here? Glad I got my Christmas money in. And I feel like they just kind of came in and said like, you know what? Boom, drop the mic. We're done. You know, like, that's it. Let me just kick in the door. Y'all beat, like, 
I wonder if more distilleries might think about doing that now. And I know, like, it goes back to the whole Oscar season type shit. Like, you know, if you release a movie too soon in Oscar season, you might not get the Oscar because they kind of forget about it by the time that voting really comes in. Like, is it too soon to throw something out there in Q1 where people are like, I don't know if I'm going to remember that come December, but or is it something where it's like, beat that. Here's something like I'm just throwing the dart up there right now. You got to kind of split my dart if you want number one. Yeah, I like it. Put the mark on the board. Go first. I wonder if more will do it, though, now that Heaven Hill has started doing stuff like that. I think it makes it easier on everyone to a degree, easier on stores. You know, we've we've witnessed for Lord knows how long now, like the, the headaches of Thanksgiving to the end of the year. You got your allocation yet? You got your allocation yet? You got one for me? You got one for me? What can I get? Like, I mean, it's almost aggravating to go in a store because you know, anyone that we're friends with and, and, you know, patrons too, you can't even shoot the shit with them. Somebody's aggravating them the whole damn time. <laughs> True. All right. Before we close this show out, let's just talk about the big elephant in the room. RB smoked bourbon. How do you feel about this at the end of the day? Oh, wow. You threw this in late, huh? I did. Well, I, well I'm not going to filibuster this as you did my question at the beginning. Um, I've seen other places and I guess other releases of smoked bourbon, so to speak. I think in the bar scene, applying smoke technologies, we'll say, has been more than prevalent for more than a while now. If someone likes it and wants to drink it, why not? And then also the first thing I thought of was, you know, local for us, Carrie Bringle, Peg Leg Porker. What, what is the unique signature component of the whiskey he puts out? Because he's not a distiller. There's no secret to lie there. Well, I don't know if you saw our Instagram earlier, but I actually posted that. Like, everybody's freaking out over smoked bourbon, but there's already brands that have been doing it. Pegleg has been doing it for years, back when Arby's just only had the meats. I really think there's a good on-prem side of it. I think carries, I mean, we've talked about it before. I feel like that Pegleg Porker stuff, it tastes like barbecue like i i feel like it's the one whiskey i'm having that 12 year i love it but it almost feels filling like you you take a pour of that and it feels filling i really enjoy it but i also think like the reason i bring it up is i don't understand why everybody's losing their shit everybody's losing their shit because of arby's just like you said and like i'm reiterating there were other brands doing this already the second thing i gotta bring up is when you saw that post did you not think the first thing i mean at least for me the first thing i thought of was like what assholes ripped off our sticker ideas (laughs) i didn't actually i saw it in a group chat (laughs) and literally they said have you, are you guys getting a media sample of this one? I was like, let me ping my people. But I saw it this morning. The first thing I, I saw, I, I saw it going through Instagram. I'm like, those assholes. I mean, because everybody knows our Russell's Reserve. We have a theme. We did smoked turkey. We did drank more turkey. And we did Kentucky fried turkey. I mean, there's a theme going on here, y'all, if you haven't realized it yet. And I'm like, this is a DDB label spinoff. But the bottom line, all I'm saying, I don't want to belabor this point too much, but there are other brands doing this. I know everybody's freaking out because it's Arby's. Calm down, simmer down. The price will determine everything, right? Like if they put out this smoked bourbon and it's $30 a bottle, people that were complaining before are kind of going to be like, well, you know, I'll try it. But if they're putting this thing out at 150 bucks, then yeah, troll away. And you remember when Screwball first came out, it was an abomination. Nation, peanut butter whiskey blah 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 i don't know what screwball sales are you know per year right now pretty I good i don't think they're hurting for money and i'm pretty sure peanut butter whiskey could probably be considered its own like skew category at this point and then even as like another tidbit i'd throw out and i'll be done after that the stuff that uh peg leg porker has been putting out for years comes from tennessee but i guarantee you when you have it with the smoked chips that he does and in that process it's a whole lot easier of a sale so i mean must be something kind of right about it if you do it the right way i just think it's a different taste it's not that taste that you think of when you think of the tennessee 
bourbon, you know, that that is from Tullahoma. You're not getting those same characteristics you would. There's something about those hickory barbecue chips that when you're putting it through, it kind of everybody's looking for what kind of distorts that profile a little bit. For some reason, Carrie figured out what did it. I don't know if Arby's actually has like hickory barbecue chips. I don't know. I mean, I've never seen a fire. Yeah. Coming out. I mean, Burger King's home of the flame broiled Whopper. I've never seen any claims to a flame at Arby's. And I don't even think they have a flame broil at Burger King. Like they're home of the flame broiled microwave. Have you ever seen a grill there? Oh man, you go inside, especially like pre-COVID. So it puts a little too much grease in there. Shit goes everywhere. I have not seen that at Burger King. So I learn something new every day. Oh, so, but the point I was thinking though, with the peg leg stuff. Yeah. I guarantee I guarantee you if we had two glasses, pre peg leg smoked treatment, post treatment, take a sip of both. Which one do you want to take a sip of next? Like, you know, which one do you want to revisit? I think we all know where somebody's going. So I, I feel like in that perspective, if you can take whiskey that someone probably didn't really want to get into too much, so to speak, and now they enjoy it. I mean, isn't that entrepreneurship, business, I mean, whatever you want to call it? I mean, I'm not going to knock it until I get the full story. That's all I'm going to say is that people are out there knocking it. People have jokes. We got the meats. We got the peats. Whatever else, we got the neats. There are people that are coming out with great comments. I mean, I enjoy the comment section just like anybody else, but I am reserving my full opinion on this until it comes out i know what the price is i know what the age is i've tasted it and again age doesn't really mean much compared to price it's like is it that good that you think it's whatever the msrp is i just don't know enough right now i think everybody is very reactionary because it's arby's but i mean if it gets a good commercial out of it are they going to put a whiskey commercial out there because i would really enjoy that like too like is it even arby's or did somebody like hit them up and be like hey what do we have to pay you or what do you want to pay us to put your name on it for obvious synergism and marketing i really would like mcdonald's whiskey like ba da 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 i'm loving it i mean i think if i'm arby's i, I go with like kalua or something else that hits the mocha shake just right who's worried about the smoked ass meats the mocha <laughs> shake with some Kahlua, maybe a little uh, vodka or something in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's essentially like a spinoff of a white Russian paradise in my world. Somebody was writing in the comments, and uh, at least on our page, they need to worry more about bringing back the chicken quarter and blue sandwich than some whiskey. But I'll just say, on the record, I've only eaten it at Arby's once. I didn't like the roast beef. I loved the curly fries. Never went back. Oh, they're fries. They're up there. Their fries are great. Their sandwiches are a little rubbery to me. Yeah, I hadn't had one of those in a long time. <laughs> All right. Thank you to Heaven Hill for sending us a media sample of this Larceny Barrel Proof. You can go ahead and find us on Facebook at Dad's Drink of Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Instagram at Dad's Drink of Bourbon. Leave us an open, honest review, just like we leave open, honest reviews about the whiskey we drink. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? Good old Nashville, Tennessee. Cheers. Ciao.